so that's the Jaguar rolling down the runway. Sorting for the guys back at the uh, learning how to be flight line mechanics. They've been timing everything up in the interface plan. We anticipate it going up as far as uh, the um, VIP section of the runway. Some of the turn there is obviously reaching a short uh, uh, sorting. Probably just got people who. He's revving up a little bit to go back to the hangar now. to come on. The red light means stand by. And he's the man with the white smoke. You see they're all beginning to formate on him as they come down. And the one who's all by himself is Sergeant Gary Nicholson. He's the flag jumper in his third year with the team. So there they are all flying together in close formation. Their canopies are called the Fury Ram Air. Below to Naval Air Squadron at Yeovilton. Now there are two people on board there, pilot and an observer, which is what the great air that you've just described. The uh, control impetus for the pilot goes straight through to the blades, unlike the CP where it's articulated road head. The semi-rigid road head, basically there's no delay between the pilot input and the aircraft reacting. Yeah, so that's probably a very good idea. week. Uh, it was not called to be available, but somebody put a little pressure on, so here we have the proper colour scheme. Now, exactly the same as in an aircraft, really, it's all hard back on the side of the stick, convert it to forward momentum into vertical momentum. Right. So, now we're going to have another of those nose-overs, there he goes, almost vertically down, pointing straight to the ground, somebody said the car's getting bigger. That he can do first on his little wheel. The third solid little wheel, you can see, so uh, a very important uh, part of the Lynx aircraft. The Royal, Royal Navy operates the Lynx. Those people who are interested in flying the Lynx know about the young man, which is a two-seat trailer designed for the Lufthansa, who flies civil. So, here we are, the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight of the Royal Air, one of only two Lancasters left flying in the world, the other one's in Canada, and I'm going to let you enjoy the combined sound of the four Rolls-Royce Merlins and the one Rolls-Royce Griffin engine as they fly by in trail. appeared at the Hendon Air Display. Supermarine, the company that had designed it, and the wonderful man, Reginald Mitchell, who is responsible for this elliptical wing, which we see right now, that elegant shape. Dick 
Protestants version, and as it pulls away, place is taken by the Lancaster. Lieutenant Ernie Taylor is the man, the captain of the aircraft today. His co-pilot, Flight Lieutenant Loz Rushmere, navigator, squadron leader Russ Russell. And the flight engineer is, I think, British Aviation, who died in 2003. This was an aircraft designed by engineers and built by craftsmen and women for heroes to fly. 7,000. This is the Augusta Westland 109BA, Belgian Army version of this aircraft from the 17th and 18th squadron of the air component. It was originally for the Belgian Army, but all of their performed by Lieutenant Igor Krach, Gorky to his mates, and the other pilot, Lieutenant Philip Perrimans, Flip. usually they, they don't do the sort of right angle turn and do the right angle base leg they usually do a continuous turn so this was actually the first combat aircraft to exceed 300 miles an hour in level flight at the start of the Battle of Britain in August 1940 sorry about that Peter Vasher. One of its famous kills during the Battle of Britain was on the 27th of September 1940 when it shot down a Ju-88 over Beachy Head, did 49 sorties out of Croydon during the Battle of Britain and uh, destroyed some five German bombers in the process. So that's what this aeroplane did during the war. The only surviving hurricane that actually flew and fought in the battle on 605 County of Warwick Squadron at Croydon, part of 11 Group. 605 was actually an auxiliary squadron. In two months, it flew 49 sorties with 11 different pilots. On the 22nd of October 1940, it was badly damaged in combat over Dungeness. And the pilot, pilot officer Ford, managed to get it back to Croydon, but it was damaged beyond repair on site and rebuilt at Austin Motors at Longbridge. But to cut a long story short, it was eventually transferred to India, and when it arrived there, the war was turning in the Allies' favour and it wasn't needed. So it was still in its case until after the war it was transferred to the Banaras Hindu University as a ground instructional aid for the new Royal Indian Air Force. And in 1982, Peter Vasher, who's 
day job was restoring old Rolls Royces, found this aeroplane rotting outdoors in lots of different pieces, but recognizably a hurricane. Although actually I think Peter does occasionally admit that they thought it was a Spitfire at first. But it took five years of negotiations and setbacks before they got it back to England, and then another four years of absolutely painstaking restoration and research. Hawker restorations of Milden near Ipswich were the main rebuilders. This standard is quite extraordinary. It's got the original guns in the wings, deactivated of course, and the original 1940 radios. had to take the radios out because they were so heavy they were giving it um, the moving its center of gravity rather too far back and the man lucky enough to fly this today not many people are lucky enough to fly it is Carl Schofield who retired as a 747 captain and started he started and then joined the fighter collection He's now been flying for 50 years, has Carl. Display flying for 46 of them. Test piloting for the RAF on the F-35 at uh, Pataxant River, Pax River in the States. You can see that Carl treats this old lady very gently. Nonetheless, it's an absolutely gorgeous display, I think. It's a great privilege to be in the presence of such history. And that is an early Merlin engine, a Merlin III very different to the sounds of the Spitfire that we were hearing earlier, for instance. of the hurricane was gained in the Battle of Britain. Less performance than the Spitfire and less performance than its main fighter opponent, the Messerschmitt 109, but a great bomber destroyer, often leaving the dogfighting with the 109s to the faster and more agile Spitfire. But nonetheless, responsible for three-fifths of the German aircraft casualties during the battle. And the serendipity about the RAF's two great fighters during that battle was that they complemented each other perfectly. And that meant that although the Spitfires usually went for the fighters and the Hurricanes for the bombers, at any time, either of them could do either. And that's how the Battle of Britain was won. Hurricane going home after a lovely display from Carl.